Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon and it is time for another book review. This time, it's Star Wars Aftermath Life Debt. Um, now this book I managed to finish um, over the weekend. I took it away with me on a trip back home, read a lot of it on the train, um, and whilst I was back at home, it's a fantastic book. Um, just for anyone wondering, it's going to be a non-spoiler review, however there will be some spoilers for Aftermath, the book that uh, came before this, so if you haven't read that, and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled, it might be best just to turn away now. So, um, the book is again written by Chuck Wendig um, and it's a really compelling book. You know, it carries on the story of all the characters that we left off with in the previous book. Uh, Nora, uh, Wexley, we had Grand Admiral Sloan, um, you know, and it's basically a continuation of the entire saga. We still see the Empire trying to rebuild itself, trying to re regroup. Um, you know, in the very first book we had Ray Sloan as trying to come together and meet with the heads of all these different remnants of the, of the Empire um, to try and bring them all together in one swift group, you know, and, and try and strike back at the New Republic. We saw things didn't go quite go to plan. Um, didn't quite go to plan when Wedge managed to happen upon this meeting, alerted to the New Republic, and uh, most of the people in that meeting were killed or captured. However, Ray Sloan managed to escape. So the story picks up with her story and also the story of how um, Nora, uh, Temin, Sinjir, uh, Jazz, and um, you know the rest of the group. I, all the names kind of escape me, um, but they are now Imperial Rogue Hunters. So in the first book, we saw how they all met and came together, and now we've got a story of how they go around the galaxy working for the New Republic, bringing in Imperials uh, to answer for their crimes. And it's a very believable story. It's written very well. You know, a lot of these um, stories run the risk of um, leaving you lying with a lot of political talk, you know, a lot of um, catch up because, you know, you're still unsure as to what's happened in the universe between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. Um, but it actually handles it really well. You know, it gives you a clear outsight as to what's been going on because a lot of it has already been explained in the previous book as well. Um, you know, it doesn't go into too much in terms of having to set out the universe as it is. We see a lot of um, we see a lot of familiar faces in this book. Uh, you know, Leia, Mon Mothma, Han Solo, Chewbacca, uh, Wedge, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of faces. Luke is mentioned, um, you know, so it's basically if if you are, you know, a fan of the original trilogy, you're gonna love reading up on these books about the characters. Um, now the book itself and the story itself, it's compelling, um, it's interesting, there's lots of twists and turns, um, you know, it introduces more of the elements as to how the First Order came to being, and it also helps set up the Battle of Jakku, uh, which, you know, if you've played the Battlefront games, you will have uh, played first hand in a way, and you get to understand more about uh, what caused that, what's actually happening, you even know, learn the names of some of the ships that you see crashing down into the planet. So it's a really intriguing um, story from that point of view. Very e easy to read. Um, one of the things I really like about this book is that um, you don't really, you know, you read it and you don't really um, have a hard time imagining the characters, you know. It's also very diverse. Uh, I believe Grand Admiral Ray Sloan is uh, a black female. Um, Sinjir is a gay man. You know, there's lots of diversity in this book, and that is the way the Star Wars universe is going. It's becoming very diverse. Uh, you know, you just have to look at The Force Awakens to see that. Um, it's very refreshing to have kind of two females at the very forefront of the story. Um, you've got Ray Sloan on the Imperial, sli uh, the Imperial slide. <laughs> I don't think they've got a slide in the Empire. If they do, uh, can you imagine that? If the, em if the Emperor had this sort of really dark persona when he's in public, but then when he's on his own, he's just got this huge fun slide. I've just got images of him <laughs> just going down all these slides when he's uh, hidden away. Um, yeah, so from, from their side, we've got Ray Sloan and we've got Nora. Um, sort of heading up the New Republic side. Um, you know, the, the New Republic more focuses on the entire group rather than just one individual character, whereas the Empire is more solely focused on uh, the Admiral herself. 
so yeah um the book keeps you uh, keeps you interested keeps you gripped and as i say you know there's plenty you know it's not one of those books where you sit there and you look and you think oh i know what's coming next or i know what's going to happen next you really don't and that's the intriguing thing about these stories is that we don't know what's happened to these characters uh, for the most part because they're not mentioned in force awakens um you know we can assume that some of them probably don't make it all the way to the force awakens um you know i know snap makes it snap wexley is actually in the force awakens he's the uh he's the the rather chubby um resistance pilot with the beard um you know who's in on the meetings and he takes place to the battle of star killer base so he's actually in the film um but as far as i know other characters that have been created for this series um are not but you know we can assume that some of them made it some of them didn't but I mean, for me, I love reading about the Imperial side. The fall of the Empire is such an amazing thing um, because, you know, it kind of shows, and we certainly got it from the first one that, you know, everyone is out for themselves in the Empire. As soon as the Emperor goes, there is no leadership, no direction, and that's it. You know, everyone is out for themselves. And this is a story about how one person is trying to... Um, you know sort of glue the empire back together and there's also the mysterious character of the operator who has been speaking to the new republic giving them tab tidbits of information there's a lot more in this book about the operator you find out who that person is what their motives are um you know and it's a really really interesting uh read in, in terms of that you know i'm looking forward to the book after this because i think the book after this is going to start describing more about the battle of jakku and what happens afterwards um, you understand why the First Order kind of end up in the unknown regions of space. Um, and it's also just good to read about, you know, again, the there is a, a bit of political side to it on the New Republic side. Um, especially with Leia, you know, very similar to the book Bloodline. But that's to be expected because, you know, you have to set out some political aspects because... You know, you need to find out how is the New Republic coping, um, you know, as a fledgling government that still doesn't have complete control of the galaxy. And again, they do a good job of not keeping it, of keeping it interesting and not making it too monotonous. So, yeah, I mean, um, again, without going into spoilers, it's it's difficult to try and sum up the book itself. But it is a very good book. I really did enjoy it. Um, I was a bit concerned because the first Aftermath book was okay. Um, I wasn't, you know, it didn't hugely impress me compared to Lost Stars. I really, really loved Lost Stars, which was the other book that came out at the same time as the first Aftermath. But this Aftermath book is a lot better. Um, definitely up there on par with Lost Stars. And I really, really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the third one coming out. I've got two more books to read. Um, I've got the Sith Lords one, which I'm going to read next. And I've also got the one based on Battlefront. Um, so that will be coming after that one. And then, as I say, we've got the um, Thrawn book coming out next year i don't know if that's going to be one book or a series the ahsoka book is out as well so i'm going to maybe look to try and get that and then we've got the third aftermath book so we've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up in terms of star wars for the expanded universe um you know i want to start reading the comics as well some of the comics look really interesting so i might i've never been a huge comic fan so i might start picking up some of them anyway ladies and gentlemen if you've what if you've read this book i would love to get your thoughts on it if you haven't I would definitely recommend buying it and giving it a shot. Um, it's more than worth it. You won't regret it. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting read. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this review. My name is Simon, and I'll see you soon.